Hello, welcome to the Oatana Today Show. I'm your host, Francie Hall. Thanks for watching us here on Channel 181 or on YouTube or on thethirdhandvideo.com. We have a great show for you. And, you know, if you have ideas for future shows, please, please share them with us. You can call us. You can email us. You can post it on Facebook. Today's show, we're going to be visiting with William Morris. He's the new reporter at the Owatonna People's Press. And we're also going to be talking to Katie Godfrey about her new book, which is available at The Little Professor, called Sweetie Finds Her Family. We'll get to that right after these messages from our great sponsors. Stick with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Welcome back. I am here with William from the Owatonna People's Press, William Morris, and we're going to ask him the burning question that I'm sure you have. William, are you related in any way to the William Morris Agency or the other William Morrises of the world? <laughs> no, no. That, uh, it's not, that's not my connection. It's not, and w there was the William Mor Morris Agency, and then there was another William Morris. The, uh, the uh, Industrial Revolution Age uh, labor activist, writer, poet, and wallpaper designer. Wallpaper designer. You don't design wallpaper, no, though. Okay. No. So, so William, welcome, and welcome Thank you. to Owatonna. You just moved here. How long? Beginning ago? of March. Beginning of March. So you're. He's a newbie, folks, and mm -hmm. um, so you're at the OPP. But let's talk about first before you came to the People's Press. What was your background with journalism? I started with my high school newspaper just sort of on a lark my senior year and I loved it. I went to Luther College and I was all four years there I was a copy editor or head copy editor for the college paper, Chips. And so and at the same time I was also doing summer internships, sort of a recurring internship with the Wasa Daily Herald which is the Gannett paper in my hometown in Wisconsin. And then uh, after graduation, I've gone back to the Herald, and if you add up all the time I was there over five years, it's about two and a half years as a copy editor at the Daily Herald. And then that was where I was before I accepted this job and came to Owatonna. So you were a copy editor? Yes. Um, both in high school and in college, and afterwards in... Well, high school you do everything, but yes. Well, okay, yeah, and, and then, and then uh, with this, the Gannett paper there in Wausau, mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Okay, we won't hold it against you that you're from Wisconsin. You live in Owatonna, Minnesota now, so... Technically, I'm from <laughs> Kentucky, so it's... Oh, okay. It's, it's complicated. <laughs> All right. So what, so what, what uh, are your beats? Do you have, do you just do everything or what is it that you cover at the Owatonna People's Press? Well, I do do everything because we're small enough that we have, uh, we have enough reporters to cover everything, spread it out everywhere. But my primary beats are the uh, city government and also the courts reporting. So crime yes. and the city, they're not the same thing, right? So. <laughs> uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so, um, but, and do you do other things as well? Because like you said, you do everything, right? Yeah, you, uh, you know, the city reporting, there isn't necessarily uh, something new happening at the city level that needs to be written about every single day. And certainly with the, the course reporting, you hope there isn't a new crime to write about every single day, or at least not, not one uh, newsworthy anyway. So uh, we write, uh, Certainly, 
Uh, we take turns on weekends. So uh, last week, it, I was the lucky one on deck for the, the three major fundraisers, and that was a bunch of running around that day. Uh, I've written about you know, that, cert certainly other uh, benefits or charitable organizations, uh, you know, awards, so you're going to crash course on um, on the Owatonna community and all of the great things that go on around here. Yeah, very much so. As well as the things that go along with every community, which is some of the crime. Tell us so far, you've been here two months, what are some of your favorite stories? Right on the, my one month anniversary here in town, uh, we got a call from a woman whose father was a retired state patrolman and hadn't been in a police car since he retired before I was born. Uh, she had connected with a current state patrol trooper and arranged for him for his, I think, 86th birthday to do a ride along and just uh, sit in on a, on a patrol, chat with them, show them all the new uh, technology and gizmos they've got. And she invited me to come along, well, invited the paper to send someone along, sure. which happened to fall to me. Uh -huh. And so I got to spend three hours on a Friday sitting in the admittedly cramped back of this patrol SUV listening to these guys swap stories and uh, talk about the different you know, events they've provided protection for, the di some of the you know, more exotic uh, arrests or cases they've worked. And it's just, I'm getting paid to do this. And you like it. You love to get paid to. So you were just getting to listen to these two people, these two yeah, that patrolmen was, that talk was, about their, their experiences. And that was that so sounds much, cool. So much fun. So much fun. Awesome. Uh, uh, I wrote about uh, a local girl, Megan Copeland, who uh, went to, I can't remember if it was the, the final or the second to last level of, a, of an international essay contest with the Lions Club and really impressed with her. Uh, just for this this last weekend edition, I wrote about uh, Ride for the Brand, which is a new program getting set up. Uh, some local uh, folks who own horses and land are pulling together to make a, a new program this summer for children with special needs, wounded warriors, people who uh, you know, might have trouble riding horses normally. Uh, they've got special saddles, they've got horses and wagons so that these kids can have that chance to enjoy uh, enjoy and, and, and uh, th wow. th just have spend time with animals. Cool. Where is that? Is that here in town or is it just close? Outside it's town? Uh, the the guy running it is named Monty Mowry. He has a he calls it a ranch. It's a small ranch uh, just outside town with horses and some of his neighbors and friends who also are horse owners are pitching in. Oh, Wow, yep. and that that was in this last weekend's paper. Yep. So, folks, pick that up if you can, or find it at the library. That sounds really, really neat. And so, how do you find these stories or generate these stories? Like, how does the news come to us? Well, uh, for the for the city beat and the uh, crime beat, it's mostly you know I keep an eye on the police uh, reports and the arrest records that, and what charges are filed at the jail. So do you court, go to the, the courthouse. courthouse to do that, or how do you find out that information? Mostly, yeah. you can get some of it online, but they don't have any of the actual documents. So basically, you find something interesting online, and then you go to the courthouse to actually get the documents. But uh, and then city beat, like I say, you mostly get at the meetings, or you know what's going on. Then everything else, you uh, some of it comes to us. People come to come to us, like the the woman with the state patrol ride along, telling us, hey. Uh, there's something cool happening, you should cover it, which, okay. Then if we, uh, we keep an eye on various publications, newsletters, and, and the like, uh, some, uh, some things we just, uh, you know, sometimes someone who, who works at the People's Press has heard about something in their, uh, their, their at-home life and just and brings it in and says, hey, I heard about this thing, and I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. So, so you research some of it, you look for it in some places, yeah. some of it comes to you yeah. by and the public. A lot of it's just keeping your ears open sure. and, and keeping an open mind for, hmm, I wonder if there's a story in that. Uh -huh. So keeping your ears on. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. And so um, what is it that you hope to, to do while you're here in Owatonna at the People's Press? Do you have any burning aspirations? <laughs> Not terribly. No, 
I mean, just keeping your ears open and looking for that good story. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not hoping. You know, if there, if the, if the next big story breaks here, I certainly hope to write it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> normally, if the next break, big story happens, that's because something bad happened to someone. So you wouldn't want to wish that on anybody. No. But you know that. Certainly, it's our job to be prepared for that. Sure. But but in the meantime, just keep getting to know the people, getting to know the town. Uh, already, you know, driving around, I, I'm recognizing people I see at city hall meetings or or who I've written about or met in the Carosa stories. So I probably already know more people around town in Owatonna than I did living in uh, Wausau since 1998. Wow, that's amazing. So you're just getting a crash course, meeting all kinds of people, learning mm -hmm. all kinds of things, and hopefully educating us along the way with all the stuff that you are, you are learning too. It's my job. Yeah, all right. And you, I think you're the person who covered the story about the Target uh, theft, right? Oh. You, I don't know if you folks read about this, but what? <laughs> to, on, on today's file of crimes that could have gone better. Uh, the, crimes that could have gone better. I didn't mean to laugh about this crime, but it is kind of it is kind of funny. So yeah, you, we, we we try to remember whenever we're laughing about some of the the sillier crimes that they're crimes because someone someone got hurt along the way, and you don't want to take it too lightly. But we still have to chuckle a little bit about this one: the 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 folks who broke into Target and robbed their ATM and then walked out on the freshly fallen snow and walked to their car that was sitting right in the right in the camera view on the, the lane next to it, and then drove to the hotel next door where they had a room under their name. <laughs> These are not the world's smartest criminals. Yep. Oh, mm, it didn't goodness. work out so well for them. Oh, my goodness. Well, um, so... Although I, I should note that the, that's, that's according to the complaints. That course is still working its way through, so... Okay, so this is all alleged yes. crime. Yes that happened and they allegedly walked through the snow after mm -hmm. stealing yeah. this stuff yeah, that, from the ATM. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the case that they made in the, in the complaint. So oh my goodness. Uh, keep an eye on that and many yeah. other cases to see what happens. All right. Well, um, and then I understand you were briefly a teacher, right? Yes. At, at, was it, I'm sorry, was it high school level? Yeah, Holy Family Catholic Schools in Dubuque. I taught at Wallert and uh, wasn't very good at it and didn't enjoy it, and I'm much happier where I am now. So you liked you, you and and your background is in English. English. So, um, and then you, of course, you had the writing experience throughout high school and college, and then yep. afterwards. So, here. so we've got an experienced. You were a copy editor, and now you are a reporter, and we're so glad that you're here with us. Thank you so much. I'm really you're glad most that you um, you've come to Owatonna. We hope you stick with us for for a while longer. I'm having a blast so far. All right. Thanks so much. And we hope that you will stick with us for a while longer, too, because coming up, we have Katie Godfrey, and she's going to be talking to us about Sweetie finding her family. There's adventure. There's adoption. There's discovery. And it's all available pretty soon at the, or right now, actually, at The Little Professor. After a word from our sponsors, we'll be back from, with Katie. Stick with us. When using a fire extinguisher, we suggest using the pass system. Pull the pin at the top of the extinguisher that keeps the handle from being accidentally pressed. Aim the nozzle toward the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to discharge the extinguisher. If you release the handle, the discharge will stop. Sweep the nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire. After the fire appears to be out, watch it carefully since it may reignite. If you have the slightest doubt about whether or not to fight the fire, get out and close the door behind you. This has been a safety message from the Otana Fire Department. Hi, I'm Ron Clancher with Clancher and Sun Landscaping and Concrete. We support the Otana Today Show and so should you. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain and I want everyone to hear better. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty. And I'm Deb Gillard with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House, and Clarebridge of Owatonna. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show.
Hello, we are back with Katie Godfrey. You know her probably as a tourism director for our local Chamber of Commerce here in Owatonna. But did you know that she is also an author and uh, she has written an adorable, adorable book that she's going to share with us right now. And so, Katie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks I'm for having me. So, oh, I'm so excited to have you because uh, doesn't everybody aspire to write a book? I know I do. Um, and so maybe I'll be inspired yeah. to do so. But <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what got you thinking about writing this book mm -hmm. and what it's about. Sure. So um, after I graduated from college in 2008, I ended up working on a few different organic vegetable farms. And um, I was really fascinated by the fact that seeds within the same family, plant family, all look alike. So you'll notice that tomatoes, potatoes, um, eggplants, they're all within the same family. All of those seeds look alike and when they're little sprouts they all look alike as well. So it's a really easy way to identify what plants are and what family. Well, well the family, but if they look alike, I don't know if I'm getting a tomato or potato or an <laughs> eggplant apparently. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, you'll notice, you know, once they get to be a few inches tall that they start looking different. But um, yeah, the fact that they all look really similar is just a really easy way when you're trying to figure out you know, what plants need certain nutrients and whatever because they belong to specific families. Oh my goodness. And mm -hmm. so Sweetie's family, well first before we get into Sweetie's family, mm -hmm. so how is it that you came to be an author? What's your background? Um, so when I was in college, um, I had a great professor, Jim Farrell, who actually died about a year ago. Oh, I'm sorry. And yeah, it was really sad. He was a really um, wonderful inspiration and he encouraged me to write. And um, I ended up writing a cookbook. Um, basically, I wrote stories about um, my experiences cooking and um, trying to find local food. And um, then we ended up getting all of these recipes from the St. Olaf community. So um, that was the first year of that book. And then um, ever since then, it's actually been taken over by a student group. So they've been writing the same book every year with different stories and recipes. Oh, wow. So that was where I got started. And then um, I ended up shortly after graduation, I found um, a, an artist residency program called the Worm Farm Institute. And it's in Reedsburg, Wisconsin, which isn't too far from where I grew up in Madison. Um, so I decided to apply for that. And I was there for two months in the fall. And um, basically, you end up living on the farm, and you get studio space. And then um, you have time to yourself to write or whatever your medium is, work on that. And then um, for three hours a day, we worked on their farm. So oh I was goodness. influenced by that experience and um, met the illustrator, actually, who did the illustrations for Sweetie Finds Her Family oh there. So goodness. it wasn't something that I came into the residency thinking I would do, um, but it had kind of been in the back of my mind. And since the illustrator happened to be there as well, we decided to work on it together. So you were at this, so you didn't know that you were going to write this when you just went to this artist's kind of colony type place or what what's it called oh, a residency Artist yeah residence. Mm -hmm. and where you contribute by helping with the farm right. and then what some muse strikes you or well i actually went there knowing that i wanted to write about um food okay. creative nonfiction, um and i did end up writing quite a few stories that um some of them have been published in books or journals wow. um but then what happened was um the worm farm institute got a grant from um, I can't remember exactly what it was from, but um, they were able to host a traveling Smithsonian Institute exhibit called Key Ingredients America by Food. And um, so it was all about food. And the woman who runs the Worm Farm Institute just said to the artists who were doing the residency at the time, if you have anything specific you'd like to contribute to this, let me know and we'll put it up in the gallery. And so Julia and I decided this is a good time to work together on this. Awesome. You know, we've been talking about it for a little while. so. Um, the storyboards for this book were up during that Smithsonian Institute exhibit oh um, for goodness. about a month, I think. Wow. Yeah. And so, and your background, I understand, was it's American American studies, studies yeah. and environmental studies, yeah. studies, yeah. And and obviously heavily into the organic and the food mm -hmm. um, stuff, right? Yeah, I'm really interested in just in general learning about where food comes from. I'm not the type of person who will only eat organic or, you know, I'm okay. just, I'm interested in learning about what farmers do in general. Cool. 
think of. So American Studies is the other part of your job, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, kind of, you, yeah. I mean, in that it's you know understanding what's going on and where and mm -hmm. what we have to offer. And so as a tourism director, that fits right in. Yeah. And as the Environmental Studies and the foodie, um, this book is is has come. Yeah. And so it's so. I, well, tell us about Sweetie. Sure. I, this book is so <laughs> adorable, you guys. Thanks. So what is Sweetie's journey? Yeah. Why, why does she, did she lose her family? What happened? <laughs> so Sweetie is a sweet potato and she's raised by a family of potatoes. So she is basically adopted by them. Show us some pictures from her. Yeah, and because um, she is not a potato, she's a sweet potato. <laughs> right, so she's a sweet potato. So she learns that, I don't know if you can see this, but she is um, much larger than the potatoes as you can see and she's not the same color. <laughs> Um, and she learned, you know, she likes to do different things than the potatoes do. The potatoes really like warmer weather, and she's not that excited about that. So, um, and she's more of a Minnesota girl, right? So she likes, and she likes to get up early and watch the sunrise. And no one else in the potato family likes to do that. Oh so my she loves her potato family, but um, she is interested in finding her biological family. So um, she decides to go on a journey across the farm and she ends up meeting um, all sorts of other plant families. So as you can see here, um, let me pull one up. So here she is meeting um, members of the amaranth family. And in the book, um, you get to learn the Latin names of the families, but then also the common names. And there are these little bees that kind of help you out with the pronunciation of the names and everything. Oh my gosh, so um, cute. Yeah, so she meets all the different plant families, and um, here's the onion family, the alliums. So she's talking to the onions, and they right. say... And they say, um, you know, she asks if, if they're her family, and they say, well, we have these traits that are similar to yours, but we're not your family. You should go ask this other family. So she keeps going and going and going until she finally finds the um, Morning Glory family, which the, the Latin name is Convolvulacia or something like that. Um, so Morning Glory is a lot easier. But um, yeah, you can see it's kind of interesting. She's related to a lot of flowers. That is so cool. Who um, knew that sweet potatoes were related to Morning Glory? Right. Well, you did and, and other smart people. But right. um, So now, so kids get to learn about the fact that there are similarities among mm -hmm. Um, non-family members, just like in our human family, right. but that her family is a whole, it's its own right. little universe. And so who, what, who else is in the sweet potato family? It's a lot of flowers, actually. It's not um, a whole lot of other vegetables, so wow. it's kind of unique. And that's why we chose Sweetie um, as the vegetable that would help you learn about the different families because you'd think that she'd be part of the potato family. Yes. That would be the obvious thing, but um, definitely not. And you know, you can grow sweet potato vines as a decorative plant, and so that's, you know, those flowers are really closely related to the morning glories. And, wow. Um, yeah, so. Uh, so. So the sweet potato family is related to flowers, mm -hmm. and then there are the bee, what are, what are the other families that you're talking about in the book? Yeah, so um, there's the brassicas, so anything like kale, broccoli, cauliflower, they're all related to each other. And you kind of, you know, you can taste that kale kind of tastes a little bit like broccoli. And um, it's just interesting because they all kind of have a similar time frame in terms of when you plant them and when you should start them in the greenhouse and everything. Um, cabbage is related to that family, and again, the seeds all look very similar. They're just like a little round seed. So Whereas, you, yeah. Go so ahead. you learn. So in the book, it's just a really cute, and it's a simple story. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of knowledge behind it, and you get to learn some Latin names of things, yeah. and and really, I think it's just. It'd be, I'd, I I want to read it to learn more. But I tr I have not yet read it. I only saw it recently. And, um, and I flipped through it, and the illustrations are adorable, and the story mm -hmm. is just so cute. Um, and our main character, Sweetie, is also adorable, at just as adorable as you are. You are so, <laughs> so what else can you tell us? Tell us just yeah. the, the storyline, mm -hmm. and, and what's the, uh, do, should we tell the ending, or should we not? <laughs> no, but it's, it We're is also a story about ending. adoption, which was not our intention, but um, it's a great way to learn a little bit about that experience, too. I mean. Um, but one thing I should mention quick is that I will be doing a book signing um, at the Little Professor Book Center this Saturday, May 2nd, 
from 10 to noon. Oh my goodness. And so I'll be there and um, we'll be selling books there and I'll do a signing and it's also the first day of the farmer's market. I was going to say yep. it. Yeah. And it's also National Free Comic Book Day. So so are they going to give away free comic yep. books Apparently too? Apparently that's a thing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so definitely try to make it out there. So this yeah. Saturday, I'm sorry, did you say 10? To 10, 10 to noon. 10 to noon. Yep. You're going to be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can pick up your book at the Little Professor. Yes, you can. You can learn about adoption. You can learn about um, the different families. Mm -hmm. You can learn about the fact that we are all related in some way and have similarities even though we are different. That is amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for coming. This is just so cute and I'm definitely going to go get that book at the Little Professor this Saturday. Oh, great. So, <laughs> Um, that's all the time we have with Katie, unfortunately, um, but we'll have you back for sure right. with your next book. Yeah. <laughs> she's, got, she's got another one um, mm. in her head. Um, so stick with us after a word from our sponsors. Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago, my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. Today, with the help of Steele County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time. My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. Hi, I'm Amy Martinez. And I'm Adam Martinez owners of Snap Fitness in Watana. Snap Fitness is a fast, convenient, and affordable fitness center, and we're proud supporters of the Watana Today Show. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we have got some exciting notes for you about what's coming up this weekend. Um, first and foremost, of course, go see Katie Godfrey. Get her to sign uh, the book that you're going to buy for, uh, from her and from the little professor this Saturday, the first day of the farmer's market, and that's from 10 to noon, I think she said. So um, I know I'll be there. I hope you will, too. Also, Friday, um, OPU is uh, going to be presented with the 2015 Preservation Award by the um, Steel County Historical Society for their preservation and restoration of the 1924 landmark OPU building. And that's at 9 a.m. You can show up there and show your support um, for that at 9 a.m. at the OPU building this Friday. Saturday, May 2nd, it's the, the low, or for, low cost or no cost spay and neuter clinics. It is spring, love is in the air. Get your dogs and cats or the feral cats in your area. Um, spayed or neutered, uh, call 612-720-8236. Tuesday, May 5th, you can learn more about a new form of gardening called straw bale gardening from Joel Karsten. That is at the Owatonna Public Library, May 5th, 630 to 8 p.m. And uh, looks like May 2nd, Owatonna Art Center is hosting the Spontaneous Productions Improv Group. They are really funny. You should definitely go and see that. Tickets are $10 um, at the Art Center for members and $15 for non-members. Uh, they can be purchased at the Art Center, at the door, or at Cockies. Pickleball. Do you want to play pickleball? Do you already play pickleball? Um, Monday, May 4th, pickleball is starting. And that's Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 9 to noon, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5.30 until dark. Uh, that is at Morehouse Park. I think that's all the time we have right now. Please join us again next time here on Channel 181. Thank you.